Hello folks, let's take a look at SAP Business Objects Explorer today. We're going to look at navigating an information space as an end user and then we're going to take a look at creating an information space. To create one, you don't necessarily need to be a technical person. Even someone from business uh, should be able to do this. It's a fairly straightforward and easy to use interface. What is Explorer and what is an information space? The user guide on Business Objects Portal or SAP Portal seems to be pretty good about it. There's a very good definition there and I'll post this URL in my video. Now let's go to the application. How do you get there? What you're seeing on my screen right now is the SAP BA Launchpad. You could select the list of app drop downs, uh, the drop down list from here and go to Explorer or you could go from here. I already have it open so I'm not going to click again. So here is Explorer homepage. Over here you're going to see a list of all the information spaces to which you have access as a user. There is a search button here where you could search for data or metadata or both. And then you have a few links here to manage this basically from where you would create one which I'll show later. And then there's help and all the good links here. Let's go ahead and do a quick search. Uh, and if you, yes, you don't necessarily need to do the search if you already know what you're looking for. You could go into the information space and then do a search, but in case you don't know what to look for, you're just looking for, say, sales revenue in New York. You type in that and hit on search. Once the search completes, you're going to get a list of all the information spaces that have either all the data you're looking for or partly. And... Uh, what you see on the left hand side here is the relevancy score. If you see this one here, it has a lower relevancy score of uh, 3 compared to the one up here because it probably has only sales revenue and not New York here. So I'm going to go to this particular one here. I click on it and it'll open up. So here is my information space. What do I see here? Down here what you see is the uh, visualization panel where you can display charts for the data that you're looking at. Uh, on the right here, what you see is a tabular representation of the same data that you're looking at in your charts. Up here, you have a list of all the measures uh, that are available to you. At a time, you can select a max of three measures, as it says here. On the right-hand side, what you see here, all the way from state to further on to the right, all these are called facets or dimensions uh, if you know what a universe or if you have been using web intelligence. You could just filter on your data. Right here it's actually already selected sales revenue because that's what you were looking for. It has not filtered on New York even though you were looking for it. It's just highlighted it. I could either just click on it. I'm not going to do that yet or uh, to filter it or I could actually click here. Click on New York and uh, click on this icon here and it's going to show me the city New York. I further click on it and it will show me the store names actually uh, that are available in New York or that are in New York. I'm just going to remove these filters again by clicking here. On my chart on the left hand side you have options of uh, looking at different kind of charts in your visualization. The one that have a star marked are the ones that will probably work best uh, for your data. And the ones that will not work for your data are grayed out. You have uh, options of comparison and you have options of looking at percentage. This is for example a pie chart. Now uh, there are various options available here also. I'm not going to cl go click at all of those. But going back to comparison, let's go and select uh, one more measure here, margin. And you see now it's displaying both revenue and margin. Let's go select a third one, quantity sold. Now quantity sold does show up, but it uh, it's hardly visible here. Uh, but that's because the order of magnitude for quantity is much different compared to sales revenue or margin. I think sales revenue and margin, they are in millions almost, and quantity sold is just thousands. So you could go here to the comparison chart and uh, it says there's something here that's a chart with dual axis. Here if you see 
uh, sales revenue and margin are showing up on the scale here on the left hand side and quantity sold is actually showing up on the scale on the right hand side. One other thing to look at here is uh, let's say if you wanted your visualization or, or if you want to see only your visualization and you don't necessarily want to see these facets you could just click on visualization here or uh, you will now have the option of looking at only the facets. I'm going to go stick with uh, the split option right now which will show me all. Uh, as far as the facets go you can select actually a max of two so let's say in this case I'm going to select state and uh, city and you also have the option of selecting you know if you have a lot of data or let's say if you had a lot of cities in each of the state for your data if you wanted to select only the top two or bottom two or whatever that was. So I'm going to leave it the way it is right now and uh, right now I actually uh, decreased my window size to fit into the recording and uh, it doesn't seem to say uh, show all both uh, the state and city down here so I'm going to go only to the visualization mode. There you go state and uh, cities within each of these states. Uh, actually, that's kind of it. I'm not going to take too much time to go any further in it uh, from a data analysis standpoint. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as you see. Again, going back to the split option, uh, you can filter on facets by just uh, clicking on the values here. And if there is a explore more option in some cases when there is a lot of values in your facets, uh, you can click on explore more option and uh, select multiple values. Again, a very straightforward and uh, simple interface uh, requires very less training. Pretty great tool. Uh, take a look at it. Once you start working on it, it should be pretty uh, obvious on how to use it. You have a few uh, marks here. One, for example, you could bookmark uh, information space in your browser. Whatever state you are in currently is what will get bookmarked. So if you've already applied some filters, that's what will get bookmarked. You could email the current state to someone. Uh, just going to say allow, opening up my Outlook and it's actually going to send the URL. Anyone clicking on the URL, if they have access to the information space, they're going to be able to see that. What else? Uh, you have the option of exporting your data into Excel or text or whatever you like. Uh, export just your data into a CSV format or into Excel. You have options of exporting into Web Intelligence or as an image. I'm just going to cancel that. Next, let's take a look at creating an information space. Again, as mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily need to be highly technical to do this. In this case, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, create an information space on top of the eFashion universe. I went to manage information spaces. It's going to show me the different options I have here to select from. I have a HANA connectivity, SAP HANA connectivity, uh, and my universes. I am going to select the UNV universe, uh, Webby universe, eFashion UNV. Okay, from here, uh, these are already the information spaces that I have created on this universe. Let's go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to say, uh, just going to call it my demo information space. You could enter any description uh, if you wanted. Any keywords if you wanted to enter, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say executive view. Basically, if someone was to come in then search for executive view, this would show up. Objects. On the objects tab, on the left hand side, you have all the objects that are available within the universe. In the middle that you see here is uh, all the information or, or all the facets and measures that are going to show up in your information space. You could just click on multiple dimensions or objects here and uh, use the control key and select multiple objects and bring them over to the left or you could just double click on the object and it will come on to the right. I mean I'm actually going to remove one and we kind of want to and actually I'm going to remove quarter. Let me also select state and city and then for products I'm just going to say skew description. 
from meshes I'm going to select uh, actually all the meshes that I have here and uh, once you click on a measure or a dimension you could actually go and uh, rename it if you wanted it let me actually rename this one sales revenue let's just say I'm just call it sales rev I'm gonna leave the rest the way it is as far as the name go over here uh, you could also sort the uh, facets if you wanted smallest to large ascending or descending order whichever you prefer what else you have the option of selecting filters if you want it uh, I'm gonna say let's go to products and uh, there is one that says which category I'm gonna double click on that and it's gonna come here and then you click on the validate button this will basically uh, Explorer will check if everything is okay technically and when you do that if you have any prompt it's gonna ask you to select the values which you would select and then hit on next and uh, say finish once you do this your information space that is available to the end user will have values only for what you have selected here but I'm not going to do that because as such I have less data in my sample universe I don't want to reduce it further and then you have the preferences option over here you could say you know hide the facets panel when opening the information space this will load it up faster uh, this will load up the information space faster and uh, you have a few options here for displaying the facets uh, you have the option to schedule your information space here it says none so you're not going to schedule it uh, but basically uh, you need to index this information space before it will be available for the end user and uh, if you want you could schedule it once you know right like let's say if you know that your data is available only tomorrow or something like that you could schedule it once or you could schedule it periodically you're going to need this information from your IT folks uh, or the administrator of the box and uh, personalization uh, we talk about that later but let me go back here I'm going to say none and once I do that the OK sign is going to show up what's it my demo information space uh, when I go here and uh, refresh my list I think it's still not going to show up that's because it's not yet indexed so I go ahead and click on index now okay it now shows a green check mark which means it's indexed and if I uh, hold my mouse over it it's going to show me the start and end date uh, with the time in this case it was pretty fast to read less data go back here refresh my list and there it goes my demo information space so uh, pardon me for the spellings I click on it and uh, there you have all the facets and measures that you had selected while creating the information space. So have fun with it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching.